Welcome to What's the Deal with Sam? Starring Sam Lilly. Join Sam as he discusses a wide variety of topics. Now let's start the show. Thank you. What's the deal with video game reviewers? Don't have a joke for this one, so whatever. Look, I, I mean, I know I'm a video game reviewer. I'm not perfect. I'm pretty far from it, though. But I've seen a lot of video game reviewers doing stuff, and I, I know what they're like. The thing is, a lot of video game reviewers kind of tend to pick a side. And that can be kind of annoying. Um, because really, what I mean by this is usually they'll try to be as, um, you know, loose with it as possible, and they'll try to, um, you know, they'll try to be more impartial, but really, a lot of times they'll end up picking a side. And while they're pretty good with, you know, not just deciding straight up that I like it, this, like, I, it's good or bad, and just leaving it, um, the thing is, usually once they'll they'll kind of decide whether they like the game or not, which is a, it's fine. It's your opinion if you like it or not. But the thing that sucks is that usually when they decide they like a game, they're gonna say everything good about it and either unfairly downplay a lot of the flaws or just flat out ignore uh, certain flaws because they probably didn't notice them. Um, the thing. That's uh, usually worse, though, that I see more often is when they decide they don't like a game, that's when the shit really comes out. Because they, once, once, once a video game reviewer tends to decide, you know, once they decide that they don't like a game and that it's bad, then not only are they going to find all of the problems with it, you know, legitimate things like, oh, there's this glitch, the control is awful, um, or, yeah, like a glitch breaks the game, the control is awful, uh, uh, or there's like a plot hole in the story. Those are going to ridiculous things that, you know, are really, really nitpicky things they don't need to uh, really bring up. But the only reason they're bringing it up is because it's one more thing to support their case, not necessarily something that actually bugged them. It was just that they decided to point it out because the game as a whole was pissing them off, and they thought all these little things should be kind of targeted when other games also contain little things that are kind of bad. Like, uh, you know, it's fine to point out, like, oh, there's this glitch that makes the game uh, completely unplayable, and after you do this, you, you have to restart your game. That sucks. Or something like, oh, well, in this part of the story, like, this character has to get from point A to point B, but the bridge is gone at this point. And how did they get there? They didn't never, it's never explained. I don't know. That's like a plot hole. Like, that's worth mentioning, especially in a game that's more heavily geared towards story. But the things that aren't really relevant to mention are, you know, ridiculous things that you, know, you have to kind of accept that they happen in video games. I mean, oh, well, there's no way that Link could carry all that stuff and be way too heavy. I mean, where is he even going to fit all of it? How did he pull that object out of there? It's way too big to fit just instead of his tunic. That's stupid. Yeah, that's unrealistic. I understand, but you have to understand it's a video game. If you didn't like the game, you have to go insulting things like why certain items do certain things. Like, I can understand it to a point. But you have to adjust. If it was something completely contradictory, like collecting a heart hurts you, and it's worth mentioning because that's just stupid. You can adjust to it, but it really shouldn't be like that because common logic would think that, you know, collecting something like a heart would be good. However, if you wonder why, oh, you know, being specific, you'd be like, why, why does eating a heart make you bring your health back? I mean, if I just go and, like, I'm unhealthy or I have a cold or something, I just eat somebody's heart and I'll be fine? Like... It's a stupid thing to observe because it's not real life, and they know that, but sometimes it's for comedic effect, and I don't think that should be done. I think that, you know, the game should be funny enough on their own. You shouldn't have to make up comedy for it. If there's something laughably bad about the game, just explain what it is, and it should be funny just the way it is. You shouldn't have to really make up shit and be like, well, that doesn't make any sense. Why would this do this? Like, sometimes it depends on the situation. I'll say that. Some things are completely ridiculous, like, why would they happen? But 
when things are just really nitpicky and there's things that happen in most video games and you didn't, you know, these same reviewers wouldn't complain about it in, in certain video games, but will in others because the ones that they complain about it in are games that they thought that were bad and the games that they just accepted in are games that they liked anyway, so they kind of overlooked it. And that's kind of a, you know, kind of a bullshit thing that happens with a lot of video game reviewers. And I try not to do that. I try to keep it as impartial as possible to point out when there are bad things about a game. And the thing is, like, once you do that, it's hard because then you start to take not such a stance on the game. You feel very flippy-floppy if you, if you if you try to look at it impartially a lot because there aren't a whole lot of games where there's absolutely nothing redeeming about it. You can still have fun with games that, you know, were designed poorly or you might not like a lot of parts of them, but you can find fun stuff in them. And there are also a lot of games where you can love the game. It can be your favorite game of all time, but you can't ignore that it has glitches and flaws. There's no perfect game. And I don't think there's been any completely terrible game that I've ever played. But then again, I I don't really play... Uh, I haven't played a lot of terrible games. There are a lot of games I've seen that look pretty bad that i never touched. But I guess that's just kind of... I found that annoying, uh, you know, picking a side and like, oh, I like this, but I, I, you know, and then list everything good, or you don't like something, and then just list everything bad, and try to add in extra things. Um, I have no problem if you find some kind of cool philosophy thing, or some kind of cool comparison piece. Which is another thing, comparing. Um, something you can definitely do within game reviews, and people do it well, but it comes to a point where you can't, you can't compare it to too many games, or sometimes it's compared unfairly, is really the problem. When you compare a game to something that that came out after it, that's not fair to do. Because this game never even knew that. And, and um, or that, you know, that thing, whatever that was, didn't exist yet. There was no way that this could have known how to do it like that. Um, and you definitely say that that does it better and recommend, you know, like playing that instead if it's a very similar type of game. And you can look at other games that's ripped off and see if it doesn't do that as well, but you can't just pull something from the future and say, it didn't do it as well as this game did, so therefore this game is, is shitty because it's possible to do it this good. At the time, maybe it wasn't, or if they, you know, maybe they just didn't know how to do it because there wasn't this example out here of, of it. And that's that's kind of a thing that I, I've also found is sometimes a little unfair. It's very rare to have, you know, compare it to something afterwards, but um, it does happen sometimes, and um, yes, those things just made me kind of annoyed with some uh, video game reviewers, um, and I guess I kind of like more straight reviews and just talking about a game rather than trying to put comedy into it. Not that I hate the comedy or anything, I mean, it's fine to throw it in there, goofy stuff, and especially when it's lighthearted and they know it's just they're making up stupid things and they know it, but some some people do it and they just take it so seriously that it's, it's, it's weird that they point out things and try to be funny, like, oh, this is laughably bad that, you know, oh, you just, uh, you know... Mario eats a mushroom and he just gets really tall. Like that was, That's not what happens if you eat a mushroom. That's stupid. You know, you eat a flower and you shoot fire. That doesn't really happen. What kind of flowers is he eating? Man. Like, no. You have to accept how the world works in the game. If things don't make sense within the internal logic of the game, like getting a fire flower at one point gave you, you know, had you shoot fire, and then getting it at another point just made you die, yeah, that would be bullshit. Why would they do that? But, you know, that's just not the case uh, with Mario. So... I guess a lot of it is just kind of trying to keep perspective on it, and I don't understand. And hopefully I'm, you know, keeping good perspective when I do my reviews, but then again, I ramble a lot, and not a lot of people listen to me, so even if I did fuck up, not like anyone would really know, would they? So what's the deal with video game reviewers? And sorry if this episode wasn't as angry as I'd, uh, you know, I'm used to doing, as you guys, are, you guys are expecting, but it was a pretty interesting topic, and I could have done it in San Leonardo Reviews Games, I didn't. I did it here because I thought, you know, I was complaining. And, well, I think this is a pretty good show for complaints, don't you? I do. And it was suggested for this show anyway, so I decided to put this one here. So, yeah, this was a request video. Getting those in now, so. What's the deal with video game reviewers? You think of the joke. Say